Hey everyone, Jamie here from technicalcafe.com. Welcome to your eighth CSS tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to talk a little bit about how to change a web page's background and uh, modify the background a little bit as well using CSS code. If you've watched our HTML tutorial series, though, you may have seen that we've already learned how to change a web page's background using HTML. Um, but in this tutorial, we're going to talk a little bit about how to do it using CSS, um, which, as I've said before, if you're working on a large scale project or just want to keep things a little bit more organized and neat, um, changing the web page's background using CSS is probably the preferred way because all of our code for the styling the web page is kept in a separate file, provided that you're using external style sheets. So uh, let's get into it here. What you're seeing right here is just what I've been doing throughout the past uh, couple CSS tutorial videos, or maybe even all of them. I'll just uh, have a header here to show you what the tutorial is about, since we're not really doing much with the page. And uh, so this header right here is represented in our HTML uh, file by a div with the ID of header. And I've just centered some text within it. And if we come over here to our styles.css page, you'll notice that we styled the header by giving it a width, a border, a margin, and a bottom margin to uh, separate anything if we decide to put some text in here from uh, the bottom of the div there. So we didn't really do anything special with this. You've probably seen all this stuff before in previous videos or uh, elsewhere on the internet. So let's learn how to style a background uh, using CSS code. So the background that we're going to want to change is actually a part of the body element in CSS. So we're going to come over here to our CSS code and we're going to put it above the header since um, it's basically global. It affects all of our uh, elements within the web page. So in order to say that we want to style our body's background, what we need to do is we need to use an element selector of body and then we're going to uh, put in some curly brackets to create a code block. And by using the body selector, we're going to change the background of the body similar to how you would use um, in HTML. You change the attribute of body and then background, uh, similar to that, but we're going to be doing it in CSS instead. So if we come over here, we're going to be using the um, background property. And the first type of background we're going to apply is actually by changing the color of the uh, HTML web page's background. And just like with a regular HTML background, you can do this in one of two ways. Um, the first way that we can do it is by using just a regular English word like gray. And we're going to end this using a line terminator or a semicolon. And if we save this, come back over here and refresh, you'll notice that our background is gray. And this also includes the div here, um, the header div that we created. And it's going to change the background of every div on the page. So um, this is that's one way to do it. The next thing we can do is actually use a hex color code. Um, and we can also use shorthand to three numbers instead of six. So we can say 999999, which is also a form of gray. And if we come over here and refresh, you'll notice it's just a little bit lighter, but it's still a gray and it changes the background just as well as using an English word. So we can actually shorten this down to just 999. And if we refresh, you'll notice that we have our same gray background. Um, something I want to note real quick though, if we want to change the color of this div here, I have the div background different. We can do this using the same exact method that we're using here by setting a background property. And we can say, for example, white and save this, come over here and refresh. And our div actually has a white background now. And this is useful if you want to have uh, contrasting styles or something, or if you're trying to style a web page that you know is based off what your client wants, or you want it to look nicer and just change things up a little bit, uh, you can do that by uh, changing the properties of the div. So let's come back into our code here, and we'll delete this. So another way that we can actually create a background for a CSS, uh, for CSS code for an HTML web page, is by using an image. And just like using an image in HTML, let me just save that, um, we can specify a URL for our image. So we're going to be using the same property, the background property in uh, CSS, but we're going to be adding another value of URL, and we're going to close some, um, some parentheses here. And within these parentheses is where we're going to put the file location of whatever file we want to use for our background image. So um, we're going to be using a file that's on my desktop, which is the same folder, or directory rather, as the index.html and styles.css page. So we're just going to say photos .jp, or photo rather .jpg, and we're going to enclose that in a single quotation mark. So we, where we do it, what we've done is we've referenced the photo file on my desktop. Um, it can also reference it like this since it's in the same directory. And if it's in a different directory, you can just go up the directory using the directory structure like that. So let's just delete this here. So what we're going to do here, when we come over and refresh, is you notice that we have this image, which is the Technical Cafe uh, logo at the time of this video, taking up the whole background of this web page, uh, including the div. So let's just actually change this div's color back to white so we can contrast it. 
and we'll refresh. Okay, so here's our background here, and you'll notice that um, it's just repeating all along the page, up the up and down the um, x and y axis. And there's a way we can actually change the way that this this image repeats by using a property called if we come over here called background dash repeat. And there's a couple different things we can do with the background repeat property. Um, obvious, obviously, if your image is big enough, you don't have to have a background repeat. It can just kind of fill in the web page itself. But if an image is small enough, um, like we have here with our image is only like 100 by 100 pixels or something like that, we can actually set the image to repeat um, using a couple different ways. We can either say, say no repeat. And if we save that, we can come over here and refresh. And you'll notice that the image is just here once. And again, if you have uh, an image that's large enough where you maybe you want to center it or something, the no repeat attribute would probably come in handy because uh, you can maybe center the image and just have it in the middle. We can also choose to repeat it either among the uh, y axis, which is up and down or vertical, or the x axis, which is horizontal. So for instance, if you say repeat y, you'll notice that the, um, the background image repeats up and down um, throughout the width of the web page here. And we can actually say repeat x, and the image will go the other way uh, along the x axis of the web page. So, this is just something that you can fool around with to try to you know, find something that you like. Um, for right now, we're going to say, though, no repeat, and we're going to save that. And if you notice with these, we have a dash. So, for repeat x, repeat y, and no repeat, um, we're going to be having a hyphen or dash between these, um, two, between these two words. So, if we save this, come over here and refresh, you'll notice that we have our single image again. So another property that we're going to be using, or that you can use to change your web page's background in CSS, is the background position property. And what this does is it lets you decide where you want the image to be um, within your web page. So for example, right now our image is in the top left, which is the default. And we can say top left. And if we save this and refresh, you'll notice that the image doesn't move. And that's because it's in the top left, which is the, the default image, obviously. Um, for example, if we want to move it to the right, we can say top right, and the image jumps over to the other side. And in combination with this, we can say if we want to repeat x, the image will repeat among the x-axis, or we can repeat it among the y-axis. So this is just something that we can um, kind, of, you know, kind of mess around with until we get something that we like. Um, for example, let's say we want to move it to the bottom center. We can go about doing that, and the image will repeat among the bottom center. Uh, let's just turn off this right now so we can see where the image really is. And you notice that this is where the image is. So this is basically how you can go about setting a background using CSS. Uh, if you want more information about other things that you can do, I'd suggest you uh, go head on over to w3schools.com or maybe tizag.com, or you can just do a Google search. And there's lots of information on these websites that can help you out with um, figuring how to set backgrounds and CSS and whatnot. Uh, what, I, what you've seen here is just the basics, and I'm sure there's more to it that you can go about using. So um, remember that you can set divs to have their own backgrounds, um, different than what the back of the web page is, for example. Um, so feel free to fool around with that stuff, make your web page look nice, set a background. Um, and if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please feel free to let me know. Um, you can also contact me on Twitter at twitter.com slash jamiemcg. And Technical Cafe's Twitter is twitter.com slash technicalcafe. And also feel free to use the contact form on technicalcafe.com, or you can just simply leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you. So thank you for watching and have a great day.